In the first two videos of my 386DX series, I talked about the idea of just simply building a board that I could use to start learning more about the 386DX and how it might be similar to or different from my 286 build that I've been working on for quite a while. And as a reminder, I'm still actively working on my 286 build. I'm in the middle of a 386SX upgrade for that right now. But this series I've kind of set aside separately and we'll focus on the things that are more 386DX specific. And this is the board that I'm going to try to experiment with. Now to organize my thoughts and kind of give me a, a, a game plan to work through this, I've come up with a series of steps that look like this. And I posted this on my blog, so if any of you are following along and want to kind of see updates as I go, I'll update this blog entry with where I'm at in the process and I'll share what I'm learning as I go. And so you can see I have quite a few steps to work through. The ones with the green box with the check mark are ones I've already completed. And in this video, I'll quickly show you what that looks like for these first six steps, which are, are quite basic. And so I'm working on this here and I'll use this graphic to the left consistently as I go through these videos just to, to highlight what part of it am I working on. And to the right is this list and first things I've done is I've come in here and said okay let's get a power connector so I put a just a DC barrel connector here. I could also use a couple of these other connectors but that's the one I'm going to use is a DC barrel connector. I've added a capacitor right coming into the board. I've added a power LED and resistor to go with that and a reset switch. And that reset switch is going to connect down to this DS1232. And that little IC does a delete, delayed reset when I turn on my system. So it holds the reset active for a small amount of time just to give the system all of the different ICs a little time to settle. And then basically releases that reset. Or if the voltage drops too low, it auto resets the system. And it can also take in a switch, basically, like I've done here, to reset the system. So that's the step one. Let's just get the basics of power, decoupling capacitor, and a power LED. And I have the, the uh, DS1232 in there. And then I installed the 386DX socket right here. And then a processor in that socket along with the capacitors around it and resistors for pull up, pull down for certain signals. And then I got into the first PSOC. So I have two PSOCs in the system. One of them down here is for clock reset, A0, A1, and S0, S1 generators. And then I have a general decode uh, PSOC up here. And for now, I put in the simply sockets, things I can insert these PSOCs into for both of these. And then I've programmed this PSOC down here to at least give me my clock and reset something I can use within my system for that. And basically this DS1232 has an active low reset. Uh, the 386DX is expecting an active high. So I bring that reset in and then I send out an active high reset to the 386DX. I'm also generating the clock from this PSOC down here. So this PSOC is generating me a clock 2 and a clock. And I can just choose whatever frequency I want when I program the PSOC. And I'm starting really slow. So I set this at 50 and this is going to be at 25 hertz so I'm quite slow just kind of want to see if i can do some basic testing and if this processor is is kicking out something that looks reasonable and as far as the actual psoc that i have going this is what i've started with so i just have a clock two signal i'm setting it to 50 hertz and that comes out of this pin 1.7 on the psoc and then I also have a flip-flop and basically I'm just going to basically send that clock signal in and every time it rises I'm going to go ahead and flip this clock out. And what this is essentially going to give me is a clock that's half the speed of clock 2. So that will give me my 25. So I've got my 50 hertz, I've got my 25 hertz. And then I'm just inverting that active low reset coming in and sending out an active high reset. 
And I know there's more work here. These clocks and reset have to be synchronized. I haven't done anything in particular to, to address that. And I'll have to figure out what that might look like as I go forward. But for now, I've got a clock two and I've got a clock and then I have a reset. And so that's all coming out of this PSOC right, right here. And so I'm gonna say I got that for now done. And then I have applied power. I did not get any magic smoke, which is great. And then I did some initial probing. So the way I've set this up is I have all of these address latches across the top and all of these data transceivers across the right. And then I have another uh, latch over here for some additional control signals and an optional one down here that I might use later. But all the signals coming out of the processor, then I can easily just come up to a pin on one of these sockets and just check for you know an address signal or check for a data signal or a control signal. So it's really easy for me to just quickly probe and I'm not putting in any of these ICs yet, any of the latches or, well, for address or data or control. So none of those latches or transceivers, I should say, are populated yet. But I did some initial testing and it seems like I'm getting out of this 386 processor signals that look clean they look like they're valid startup signals as the 386 is trying to load up code and run something which of course it can't get to yet and then i have also put in just plain old sockets down here for these pals so these two chips will hopefully do a lot of the just common logic to glue this system together and intel has provided some details on that in their hardware design guide, but I just need to get that figured out how to program that and get that onto these PALs. So I'll work on that in an upcoming video. And that's where I'm gonna have to convert this ABLE into couple or something else like that. And if I take a look at what this looks like as I get into it, this is my board as it sits right now. So again, you can see I've just got my barrel connector up here that I'm using for power. I'm showing that I've got power applied. I have a positive negative connector. So I just connect my, my scope in real quick here and plugged in and I'm just reading an address signal as an example. Here's my PSOC put in place. Again, here's that 1232. And then of course the processor, The I have capacitors around it. So these are all 0.1 microfarads along with uh, 10 microfarads. So I've just got some capacitance surrounding it. So I should be good there. And then my appropriate pull up or pull downs for some of the signals that I need to have those. And that's where I'm at so far. And so far, so good. Like I said, that not doing anything too crazy yet, uh, but I am getting an appropriate clock into the processor. I am seeing address data coming out of it and data coming out of it that looks reasonable. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is work on getting these PALs figured out. How do I take this ABLE syntax or language that Intel describes these with and get it into something that I can then program or create a PLD and program these, these PALs. And then I'll also have to come up here and get this decode PSOC up and running. And if I back up a slide, you can kind of see here that I've got to get these PALs going. Uh, I then have some additional work to put into the first PSOC, which is to generate A0, A1, S0, S1. I'm going to need those for connecting other things, uh, basically to my ISA bus and other peripherals. And then I'll start my PSOC for the decode, this up here. And then once I get through that, then I'm going to come back and install my transceivers and latches and getting some debug headers. So I again can come in and take all of these ICs and get them in place along with this control latch over here. And then I have these nice little headers to be able to maybe connect up an Arduino as an example. So I can connect into all of those and be able to read that out on my Arduino. And I'll keep the clock speed slow. You know, maybe I'll even go slower than this at some point, or I could single step and I could do that in a couple of ways. I could program the PSOC to let me just push a button on it. It does have a little button right here that I could just say every time I press that button, it'll cycle the clock one. 
uh, or I can externally plug in, I have a header up here, I can plug in an external reset and clock signal. And I have a separate board I've built that lets me do single stepping of clock. So I could just bring that wire in, plug it in here, and use that as my clock source if I wanted to. So I have some options available to me as I get into this. But for now, starting out slow, starting out with just a few pieces in here, making sure that things uh, look okay so far. And that's where I'm at. So I will continue to work through this list. And like I said, this is probably the next big chunk I need to work on is these PALs. And I have a feeling that's going to take me a little while. So no rush this entire project. I'm just going to kind of work through it as I need a break from my 286. Uh, and right now on my 286, I'm waiting for an updated 386SX board. And while I'm waiting for that, I thought I would put a little effort into the 386DX. But that's it for now. Just a slow start here. Thought I would introduce, though, that I am working on this. And I will progressively build this out. And that's what you're going to see in the upcoming video series is just piece by piece as I work through this. Uh, whether I'm making good progress or I'm just completely getting stuck as I go through it and have to rework something, I'll share what I'm learning. And as a reminder for anybody that hasn't been watching my video series, you know, I'm just a hobbyist. This is just something I do for fun. So I'm learning as I go through this. And if at any point you're seeing something that I am misunderstanding or can provide any tips or guidance, feel free, drop a note uh, down in the, the video uh, comments below.